Most parents today want their children to go to preschool. A lot of learning, perhaps more than we ever thought before, really does happen when children are very, very young. But what children get depends on what their parents can afford. If you don't have the money to go to the very good preschool, then you don't get that head start. You're sort of like tagging along there. The inequality that we see in education happens at a very young age. Should government provide public preschool for all children? We do that with the first grade. We do that with the fourth grade. Why not do it with pre-kindergarten? Look at how we're doing with the schools themselves. If we're going to provide such wonderful uh, preschools for our uh, nation's four-year-olds, why haven't we done that for our nation's five through 17-year-olds? Uh, Coming up, journalist John Merrow investigates how well America educates its youngest children. Major funding for this program was provided by the Annenberg Foundation. Additional funding was provided by the Pew Charitable Trusts, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, and Carnegie Corporation of New York. child's mind between the ages of about two and five is the most amazing thing that there is. Yellow and blue make green. Yellow and blue make green. They are like sponges. They just soak up all kinds of information. Mine smells like oranges. Traditionally, public school in our country begins in kindergarten or first grade. But is that too late? Many of our children are coming to school in kindergarten for the very first time. They have no idea of how to hold a pencil. They have just got, gotten out of their mother's laps, per se. Up to 30% of children enter kindergarten unprepared. And by age nine, 40% of fourth graders in America cannot read at the basic level. Some say preschool is the answer. We need to prepare our children to read and succeed in school with improved Head Start and early childhood development programs. It's the most important grade that there is in school. Pre-K. Pre-K is. If I had my way, I would do away with the last grade in high school and put it back on the front end. Come on. Sure, it's more important than the 12th grade. Pre-K is a lot more important than the 12th grade in high school. Think the troll's still gonna eat it? Preschool is the beginning. I mean, you know, we tend in America to wait until after children get into trouble, after they drop out of school, after they commit a crime, um, after they have lots of problems with their families break down to invest. That's the least cost effective and humane investment we can take. Government now provides preschool for about half of low income children. Child advocates argue that government should make preschool available and free for all children whose parents want it. I think we need a universal system, or at least a coherent system, because there are a huge number of parents who are struggling every day to find consistent, high-quality care for their children. But how good are the government preschool programs that already exist? Before universal pre-K is talked about, we've got to talk about universal quality. Once we have universal quality, then I'd say expand. What is that? What's he doing? He's diving. He's diving. Today in the United States, we have a patchwork system, a network of private and public programs that range from babysitting to highly educational. Some teachers are well paid. Who, me? Yes, yeah. Others make minimum wage. What's clear is this. If you can afford it, you can have the best. Rory started preschool when he was three. Now he's almost five. Is that one the same as this one? What I want is for him to have a passion and an excitement and a curiosity, and for us to provide him an environment that supports that. Rory goes to Westside Montessori, a private preschool in New York City. So Anna is going to be the sun, and who is the earth? Here's the earth. And does anybody know what the string is called? The orbit. The orbit. The Earth goes around the sun, tra-la-la. -la. 
tra-la-la, the earth goes around the sun, tra-la-la. What we offer them is high content. They know a lot about a lot of things. Uh, they're very capable, and they feel good about themselves. The earth has made it around the sun two years. What are some things that you were able to do when you were two years old? Talk. Talk. The goal of the teacher is to create an environment that is attractive and entices the children into doing math things, literacy things, science things, art things, music things. Most children don't have access to the kind of preschool education Rory gets. Why not? because tuition at schools like Westside Montessori can be as much as $15,000 a year. Can you copy? What $15,000 buys is good teaching. All the lead teachers at Westside Montessori have master's degrees. Tom came in the first day of school last week and told me that he loves chess. And we play chess almost every morning. Everything in the classroom is a precursor for something else. There is academics going on the entire day. There is math spread out through the entire room. There is reading and writing everywhere. What is this, Anna? Tease Mr. Alligator, catch me. The starting salary here is $38,000 a year. The average preschool teacher in America makes $19,000 a year and has little more than a high school degree. Teachers are the quality in an early childhood program. It's not just about a pretty building or a, the entryway when you walk in. Teachers are the heart of quality. It's the relationship between an early childhood teacher and a child, the relationship between the early childhood teacher and, and the parent that really is at the heart of the program. You want to ride super fast? Okay, that sounds great. One of the most exciting things for me about Rory when he started recognizing letters at school as we were walking and there was a big sign in front of the park and he said, Mommy, what does that say? If he's excited about what those letters symbolize and that they tie together into words and concepts and ideas, he's going to love school. I we got Nikki. Nikki has a? Banana. Banana. Rosie likes eggs and... Bacon. As parents like Ifrat know, research has shown just how much children can learn at a very young age. Sand comes from the bottom of the sea. The reality is it is a formative time, and we do have to nurture and capitalize and make sure that children's early experiences are nurturing their entire development. Actually, I think we can also trace this back a little ways. Uh, in the 60s, we began to see more and more discoveries and more and more emphasis as a result of those discoveries on cognitive development. Do you see the jellyfish? Psychologists thought that but maybe the best thing they could do for kids was to start education very early. And this, they were particularly concerned, of course, with deprived children. starfish. What's interesting is that the idea of early education has expanded into the middle class uh, and, and into the uh, upper middle class as well. For Rory's parents, preschool is an investment. Most of the children who go to Rory's preschool will go on to prestigious schools, schools that regularly send their graduates to big name colleges. This morning we're going to a tour of one of the kindergartens because Rory will be starting kindergarten next fall. Um, the nerve-wracking part is when you submit the application and all of the essays that go with it. And essays. Yes. <laughs> what does that say mean? Essay is when you write, they ask you a question, you have to write an answer to it, and that's called an essay. Here it is. You know, we've been very fortunate in that being in New York City, we have, you know, an amazing choice of schools to choose from. Um, and that our personal situation has enabled us to make some additional choices. So I feel very, very blessed in that area. I have my full-time job. I live with my children's father. He's got a full-time job and a part-time job. He works two jobs, and we're still trying to make ends meet. Have a good day. Maria Corrigan lives in Bridgeport, Connecticut with her husband, Robert, and their four children. Age 13, 10, 
three, and one. <laughs> it's gonna make you feel better. Did I work through what I have to do with the children? Come on, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then in September, I'm starting school. So yeah, you can call me your super mom. <laughs> when does that money have to be in? By October 11th. Okay. That's the hard part. Every time you turn around, you have $50 for a trip here, 100 for a trip there. It's okay, though. I'll give you the money. I'll get it. Whatever they need for school or trips or whatever, you know, we try our best to, you know, give it to them. We want the best for them. And we want them to go to college and everything. Hi, David. Hi. Bianca. Between the, the two of us, we don't even make 30000 a year. Put it that way. And we have a family of six. Maria and Robert don't make a lot of money, but they're still able to send three-year-old Bianca to preschool. I did it. You did it. All right, Bianca. She loves it. She talks about it all the time. She gets up, like, this morning, you know, we're going on a trip, I have to go, and I have to make another picture in my classroom. She loves her teachers. Bianca stole the cookie from the cookie jar. For Maria and Robert, Bianca's preschool is free. That's because Bianca goes to Head Start, a preschool program for poor children paid for by the federal government. What kind of prints are those? Dog prints. Dog prints? Bear. Bear. Derek said bear prints. They have the opportunity to explore. Look. Look at the bald eagle. To explore and discover. It helps them with, like, their thinking skills and problem solving. Bianca is one of 900,000 children now enrolled in Head Start, which was created in 1965. This administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. Head Start was an important weapon in Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty. Head Start is an effort to prepare these children of poverty to enter school on an even footing with more fortunate youngsters. It probably was America's finest hour. There wasn't any vast preschool education movement before Head Start in 1965. That's Johnson's doing. Dr. Edward Ziegler was one of the architects of Head Start. Johnson was committed to the personal success of every human being in this country. He was a very idealistic man in that regard, and he saw that success predicated upon a good education. We set out to make certain that poverty's children would not be forevermore poverty's captives. Good morning, good morning, good morning, how are you? Nearly 40 years later, the federal government spends $6.5 billion a year on Head Start, an average of $7,000 per child. I believe I can touch the sky. Head Start pays for more than just preschool. Let's see. From the beginning, Head Start was designed to offer health and social services to families and jobs to parents. For me, it did a lot. At the time, I was on welfare. I had very low self-esteem. I mean, even the postman told me one time, I only see you dressed on check days, you know, because you never get dressed any other day. I mean, it was really, really pretty bad. Ready? We're going to school. Today, Bianca and Maria go to school together. She has to go up the ramp. Hooray! Bianca to learn, Maria to work. And at my party, he took the biggest piece of cake. Head Start employs Maria as a teacher. How do you think that made him feel? Sad. I started coming here to the parent meetings and Eventually, I became secretary, and at the same time, they, you know, talked to me about, oh, you know, you need to get your high school diploma, go back, you know, go back to school. Why don't we show Kelly how to make her own? They had a kind of faith in me. They saw something in me that I didn't see in myself at the time, you know, like I had potential. How many watermelons do we have? Maria is not alone. 
half of the teachers in Head Start classrooms are also Head Start parents. Remember, Head Start really was an OEO program, an Office of Economic Opportunity program, and that the goal for the engagement of parents in Head Start was in part educational, but also there was an employment motive to try to really bring parents and give them opportunities in this brand new wonderful effort. A lot of the women here have been through a lot of the same things I've been through. We all know how it is to have our gas cut off. We know how it is to live without this. We know how it is to have food stamps and have your case cut and stuff like that. We've all basically been through that. With a big, big hug. We're proof that you can get beyond that. And you know, it's scary, but it can be done. And that helps the kids. Oh, that helps, of course. I mean, I've always strongly believed help the family, help the child. Once you start talking about human development, the, the, the single most important institution in determining the growth and development of children is the child's family. If a child has got a dysfunctional family, how do you expect to get a functional child in, their, in your classroom learning? Good morning, good morning. Many of the children in Maria's classroom arrive needing extra help developing social and emotional skills. You know, we have a lot of angry children. A lot of children, they have parents who may be on drugs. They have parents who are working so hard they have no time for them. Many children come from foster families, because, you know, they've been uh, abused. When you're done, will you let um, Rudy have a turn? Okay, Rudy, right now she has the mouse, okay? Every child is individual, and you have to find out what you need to work on and how to help them. He has to learn to share and to cooperate. Right now, he's a toddler, you know? So with them, it's like everything is mine, mine, it's all mine. I don't have to share anything with you, it's all mine. So we have to work with him on that because he tends to go and invade the other children's space and grab their stuff. But we're working on it, right, Rudy? Helping children adjust and helping families stick together, those have been Head Start's top priorities. But the rules have changed. We know that the kids most at risk for having a tough time in school are kids that come from disadvantage. Today, Head Start is being criticized for failing to teach what it never really emphasized, reading. Reed Lyon advises the Bush administration on education policy. There is no doubt that children from birth to five need the best emotional security they can get and the best environments to have friends and learn how to manage emotions and learn how to interact with kids and caring adults. But if those kids don't learn to read as they move out of kindergarten, first and second grade, all of that work that was done to build emotional health and social competency goes down the tube. If you don't learn to read in school, you don't make it in life. A 1999 study found that children entered Head Start able to recognize one letter and left Head Start a year later still knowing only one letter. Most of what Head Start has done in many ways, while well-meaning, has been based upon beliefs and philosophies and unexamined assumptions. For example, people have thought that if you teach kids about language and literacy and reading concepts, that might produce some degree of anxiety on their part and lead to a road of, of school failure or school fear or whatever it may be. Which translates into no letters on the wall. That's correct. That has translated specifically into that particular explicit recommendation, which has no basis in science. You want to speak to Tiffany? OK, Tiffany's here. It's your mommy. Academics may have taken a back seat at Head Start because the teachers themselves are often poorly educated. Many have little more than a high school degree. I think probably a key here is the teachers. I don't want to criticize Head Start teachers, but I think if we are to mount a broad scale, successful preschool program, there will be changes in the types of teachers and in their training as compared to what we currently have in Head Start. We certainly do not have anything like persuasive experimental evidence that Head Start itself produces long-term effects on children's growth or school performance or whatever. We do not have that kind of information. We have such studies for other smaller-scale preschool programs, but not for Head Start.
research does show, unfortunately, that Head Start is a false start for children. That in the, in the years that you're in Head Start, when you're three, four years old, maybe five years old, sometimes you are advantaged. You do do a little bit better on test scores. Um, socially, you look pretty good. Uh, but the problem is something called fade out, and that is by the time you hit second grade, you're going to look just as if you had never gone into that program in the first place. In other words, it's a wash, and the net gain to you as, as the child in terms of learning is zero. In fact, research on Head Start is mixed. To date, no study has proven that Head Start either lowers dropout rates or improves test scores. However, research does suggest that children who go through Head Start are less likely to be held back or be assigned to special education. President Bush thinks that an increased emphasis on literacy will make Head Start more effective. It is pitiful, it is not right for America that over 60% of the children in the fourth grade from impoverished families cannot read. And we need to do something about it in America, and this bill does. It triples the amount of money for early reading programs, programs based upon the science of reading, not something that sounds good or feels good, but something that works. Bush has provided funding to train Head Start teachers on how to teach early reading and language skills. And the first letter that we're going to talk about is the letter S. Good job! And I've got lots and lots of neat stuff in my S tub. Oh, can you guess what I have? Yes, Santa Claus! Santa! Can you say in the past, it? Head Start teachers were often discouraged from teaching the alphabet. The Bush administration wants to change Head Start. Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Head Start, Head Start, like all early childhood programs, can benefit from improvement. But that's not saying that Head Start, as we have known it, is bad. What the Bush administration is saying is we need to focus on literacy more in terms of what's going on in the classrooms. And I think that that is perfectly compatible with what Head Start's long-term goals have always been. Many administrations have tried to reform Head Start. In 1998, the Clinton administration allocated more money to pay for teachers to get a two-year college degree, called an AA. I've taken like the early childhood courses here at Housatonic to get my associate's degree. Did any of you bring multicultural songs with you tonight? After I get my associate's, I want to go on for my bachelor's, even my master's. I just want to keep going. What kumbaya means is to come by here. This class is teaching children music. What we learn is different ways to incorporate music into our classroom. Kumbaya, kumbaya. But what teachers are learning in their college classrooms is in question. Kumbaya. Near you, there should be a bottle of bubbles. And I want, you, I want you to see how many ways you can make the bubbles move. And how many ways can you pop them? In this teacher training class in Dallas, the lesson is about self-esteem. The teacher uses bubbles as a metaphor. Did you notice that we came up with a whole lot more ways to pop them than to make a move? Our goal of guidance is to help children move and grow in appropriate ways without popping them. I would certainly say that the goal would be not only that they have college degrees, but that they have content, frankly. Let's be honest. Somebody has to make sure that those degrees represent the best information available. And heretofore, they have not. What color is this one? Many say it comes down to money. Money for better training programs, money for higher teacher salaries. There are critics of education who say we're not getting um, the bang for the buck that we ought to be getting. But the fact of the matter is you can't do any of the important things that are worth doing without money. 30 years after Head Start, the average teacher in Head Start makes $15,000 a year. Teacher, teacher, Who are you going to recruit? I mean, you really have to put up the money that makes a program really of high quality. Today, Head Start reaches only half of the children who are eligible. The Bush administration has increased total funding for Head Start by 2% which is not enough money to hire professionally trained school teachers or expand the program. We're still only serving a fraction of the children. We're still missing half the children that are eligible for Head Start, and Head Start's eligibility is very low. Head Start is the beacon of hope that we have. 
it's the one commitment the nation has made to its very young children, but the investment is not enough. Head Start has made all the difference for families like Maria's. After going through Head Start, Maria's two older children are now in talented and gifted programs in Bridgeport. I think I'm a good reader. Right now I'm reading a 746 page book, The Tommy Knockers with Stephen King. That's a grown up book. I know. I can say that my children have benefited from going to Head Start. I can't speak for all of America and everybody else. I feel I'm glad my children went. Ready? Come on, let's go have dinner. Come on, guys, let's go eat. Let's see what we got. Preschool can give low-income families a leg up, and government pays the way. For families that can afford it, there are expensive private preschools. What that leaves is the vast majority, the middle class. You know, in America, everything is centered around money. It's basically, you know, if you want anything that's good, you have to pay for it. And I think people have grown accustomed to that. Getty Felon is an American. Her husband is French. They moved from Paris with their two young sons to live in New York City. They wanted their three-year-old son, Joaquim, to be in preschool. If you don't have the money to go to the very good preschool that prepares you for elementary school, then, you know, you don't get that head start. You, you're sort of like tagging along there. Getty and her husband searched, but they could not find an affordable preschool that they liked. We couldn't get any help because they, you know, they judged that we earned too much money, which we didn't. Can I some juice? Well, folks in the middle, um, like myself, we're supposedly middle class. We just have to scramble. We scramble all the time, and that's what we had to do with Joaquin. We were always scrambling. Parents have to have the right to make choice, but you can only make choice when you've got options. And right now, many American families don't have options. And so they're, very, they're forced into one kind of situation or another. That would not be the same if you lived in many foreign countries, certainly in many westernized countries. We couldn't remain. We couldn't remain there. For the kids? For the kids. We couldn't. Because Getty and her husband could not find a preschool they could afford, they left New York City. They went where they knew they would find what they were looking for. My husband and I, we made this conscious choice to have children, so it is a conscious choice to give them the best. And if the best means that we have to pay for it and we don't have the money, or the best means coming back to a place where we don't have to pay for it, then I'd rather come back to France. In France, as in most industrialized countries, preschool is free. The French preschools, called École Maternelle, are voluntary, but virtually every child in France begins school at age three. Il faut savoir que l'école en France a, a une place très particulière puisque après la Révolution française, l'école a été créée justement pour faire l'intégration de toutes les personnes dans la société française et ça dans les valeurs de la République, c'est-à-dire les, les valeurs du siècle des Lumières, Voltaire, Diderot, etc. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Oui, bien sûr. You've probably come across this phrase a lot and it's called égalité des chances which means equal opportunity for everyone. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, what neighborhood you're in, everything is pretty much regulated to the same level. You making a boy? He's very happy where he's at. He's extremely happy. He loves to go to school every day. They're doing everything that they're doing in the early childhood programs, you know, in America, except that it's incorporated into a regular elementary school, and it's free. Ecole Maternelle is free for parents, but it costs the French government roughly $3,300 per child. Donc nous on pense que c'est très important d'investir sur l'enfance euh, et, et donc dans, dans ce sens-là, en tant que Français, nous sommes d'accord pour payer des impôts euh, au niveau du gouvernement pour que ce, pour qu'on dépense de l'argent pour ça. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça Il y a des abeilles. Il y a des abeilles. Et moi, il y a des abeilles. C'est la quoi 
C'est la ruche des abeilles. La ruche des abeilles. C'est la maison des abeilles. Et la maison des abeilles, on l'appelle la ruche. En petite section, l'essentiel, le plus important, c'est le langage. Pouvoir parler, apprendre à s'exprimer, apprendre à être écouté, mais aussi à écouter les autres. Les abeilles, elles font du miel. Elles... Euh, ce que je souhaite avant tout, c'est leur faire comprendre que les autres, c'est pas l'enfer. Que ensemble, on peut arriver à passer des moments très agréables. This school happens to be in a wealthy neighborhood in the center of Paris. But in France, unlike in America, how good a preschool is does not depend on what neighborhood you live in or how much money you make in part because the Ministry of Education outlines precise learning objectives, objectives that apply to every école maternelle in France. Au restaurant, qu'est-ce que tu as vu Du coca oh, Qu'est-ce qu'aime le coca ici On ne nous demande pas de faire chaque jour quelque chose de précis. On nous demande d'atteindre des objectifs sur une année. Et la manière de faire les choses est complètement libre. Hein, C'est-à-dire que ça nous permet éventuellement de nous adapter aux enfants qui sont en difficulté ou d'aller plus vite avec ceux qui sont plus performants. Catherine Partex is the director of an école maternelle in Créteil, a middle-class town outside of Paris. Tout l'objectif de l'école maternelle, c'est de préparer l'enfant à l'élémentaire. Et comment tu sais que, par exemple, cette lettre-là, il fallait la mettre là, dans cette case ici C'est la même lettre. Ah, c'est la même lettre pour un enfant de 3 ans, c'est important de voir des lettres peut-être, mais c'est surtout important d'écouter des histoires, de voir des images, de reconnaître son prénom. Everything at the école maternelle seems to have a learning objective, even play. Quand on joue, on peut perdre et c'est pas dramatique, on recommence. Et petit à petit, on leur explique que euh, se tromper, ça fait partie de l'apprentissage. To make sure that all école maternelle measure up to national standards, the ministry sends inspectors to visit each school four times a year. Est-ce que tu es d'accord avec tout ce qui est accroché sur le tableau là Je cherche à repérer ce qui va bien et ce qui va moins bien. Et ensuite, il me faut essayer d'aider cet enseignant à mieux faire son travail. Do you ask yourself, are the children happy je pense qu'on ne peut pas apprendre si on n'est pas heureux. Donc être heureux, ça n'est pas un objectif de l'école maternelle, c'est un moyen pour que les enfants puissent apprendre. S'ils ne sont pas heureux, ils n'apprendront pas. Alors est-ce que c'est bon le stylo Est-ce que ça va This école maternelle is in Sarcelles, home to many recent immigrants to France. Sarcelles is one of the poorest suburbs of Paris. Many of these children come from homes where French is not the first language. Cette école donc est dans une zone d'éducation prioritaire. Elle recrute les élèves dans des catégories sociales dites défavorisées. Elle dispose d'un certain nombre de moyens supplémentaires. Trois rouges, deux, deux bleus. Très bien. Teachers in these educational priority zones are paid slightly more. Classes are smaller, and children here get an extra year of preschool. They start as young as two. C'est une des premières choses qu'ils ont fait dans un esprit d'équité de justice sociale. C'est-à-dire que c'est une discrimination positive qui consiste à donner plus à ceux qui ont le moins. All of these preschools have one thing in common: highly qualified teachers. Every preschool teacher in France must have a master's degree, and the French government pays for their education. Vous avez entendu une ruche bourdonner? Non. Un, deux, deux trois. trois. Est-ce que tu les vois les abeilles? Mais faites attention, elles vont vous piquer les abeilles. Monsieur Van Uxem, c'est un vrai magicien, c'est-à-dire qu'il arrive à captiver les enfants, et ça, à la maternelle, c'est fondamental. Donc c'est vrai que pour attirer leur attention et leur apprendre des choses, ça passe énormément par le jeu, euh, par la magie, par la surprise. Oh, bah, c'est pour les captiver comme ça. 
Virginie is training to become a preschool teacher. Her training requires an internship with a master teacher like Benoit Van Axem. Qu'est-ce qu'ils ont commencé à sentir Enfin, moi, ce que j'ai essayé de leur faire sentir, c'est que le bruit, c'était une vibration dans l'air, ouais. à travers donc le petit instrument, et puis ensuite dans la séquence de PS avec le avec le fameux tuyau. D'accord. Voilà. C'est ouais, génial. Virginie studied business as an undergraduate. Now she's getting her master's degree in early childhood education. Comment est-ce que vous voyez la réalité Comment est-ce que l'on perçoit la réalité qui nous entoure nous En trois dimensions, en profondeur. In France, preschool teachers must meet the same requirements as elementary school teachers. All have bachelor's degrees in an academic subject and go through a rigorous master's program. Et que c'est beaucoup moins important. And preschool teachers are paid the same as elementary school teachers, unlike in America, where the average preschool teacher makes about half as much as a public school teacher. Oui, oui. Bon, on pourrait peut-être dire un, un mot euh, du lien que vous supposez entre socialisation et langage. Toute socialisation euh, est très liée au langage dans le sens où... Preschool teacher candidates must write a thesis and defend it before a committee of professors. Virginie, pour vous c'est fini. C'est ça veut dire quoi Mais ça veut dire que l'année prochaine j'ai mon poste en septembre. On attend les affectations là pour euh, fin juin et que ça y est, je suis professeur des écoles, titulaire, <rire> titulaire. If you talk to anybody in France, people are proud of their preschools. They feel good about them. Then they believe that children should be nurtured and families should be supported. Then they put their money where their values are. American legislators and child advocates like Marion Wright Edelman of the Children's Defense Fund are taking a close look at the Ecole Maternelle to see what the U.S. might learn from France. I think our country that leads the world in millionaires and billionaires and in military might and in health technology fall far, far behind most other industrialized countries in investing in its children in the early care. And in France, the value and the importance of children is not even discussed. It's assumed. And that is a very fundamental difference and one that we're going to have to get to in America. I think we need to, to backtrack a little bit and say there are things that are fundamental and that we deserve as taxpaying citizens in America, and that is early childhood education for everyone, so everyone can be at that level. I think that if we're really serious about uh, children entering school ready to learn, we do what France has done, we do what Italy has done. We have universal preschool education in this country. But skeptics say following in France's footsteps may be easier said than done. Could something like that work in the United States? I don't think so. I think we're too diverse a country, and I think we are too big a country. Look at how we're doing with the schools themselves. I mean, that should certainly uh, give us pause, shouldn't it? Uh, if we're going to provide such wonderful uh, preschools for our uh, nation's four-year-olds, why haven't we done that for our nation's five through 17-year-olds? Uh, uh, I think we need to put the uh, horse before the cart. Right now, the public schools have children for 13 years, kindergarten one through 12. If you could get those years better, if you could do a better job with those years, we wouldn't even be looking at preschool to begin with. Jay, that's right. But states are forging ahead. Seven states have passed legislation to phase in universal preschool. Georgia was the first. The great governor of the state of Georgia, the Honorable Zell Brian Miller of Towns County. Thank you. I'm very proud and I hope you are too, that Georgia is the only state in the nation committed to making pre-kindergarten available to every four-year-old whose parents want it. In 1996, then-Governor Zell Miller created a lottery that would pay for the first universal preschool system in the country. We do that with the first grade. We do that with the fourth grade. We do that with the tenth grade. Why not do it with pre-kindergarten? 
We don't say we're just going to educate kids in the first grade that are low income. It's universal. This ought to be universal. What color did your water turn? Yellow. It did turn yellow. Today, 60,000 families in Georgia are sending their children to state-funded preschools. It's a tremendous move forward, and I think it's a model for other states. That's what should be happening in all states, what's happening in Georgia. Education is way up there with breathing in our family. Which would you rather have? Barry. You'd rather have Barry? OK. Yeah. We sent Caitlin to school basically to develop social skills, because at home she had developed quite a lot of academic skills already. All that he could shout, shout, shout. I would say a four-year-old needs a sense of belonging first. Over the hills and far away. And kids have to play in order to get that stuff. It's an experiential thing. It's not something you can give them a piece of paper and they absorb it off the paper. There's a top hat. The Kemps are one of many middle-class families in Georgia that benefit from universal preschool. The state spends roughly $4,000 on each child. One elephant gives Babu a bath. It certainly does help that the state picks up the cost on the pre-K program because most of the private options we looked into were quite expensive given the level of care that we were after. Is this my place? Um, actually, it can be if I move my teacup. The Kemps have a combined annual income of around $65,000. However, Audrey will be leaving her job soon to give birth to their third child, and their income will drop to around $45,000. I think that we have a need. It may not be as great as other people's. It's definitely not as great as other people's needs, but the need is there. Georgia's preschool program makes life easier for middle-class families like the Kemp's. But Zell Miller wanted to do more than just help families with child care costs. Pre-K is school. It's not daycare. It's not babysitting. I insisted that they be classes where you learned something. Now, tell me about these two. That one flow? That it not be something where they just go there and finger paint. What will cause it to melt? Georgia's public schools were among the worst performing in the nation when Miller created the preschool program. Part of my thinking was that if you're going to improve the dropout rate in Georgia, which has always been terrible, if you're going to improve the rate of kids who graduate from high school going on to college, which has always been terrible, that this was one way to do it. But it wasn't as easy as adding another year onto the public schools. Good morning. Because the public schools did not have the space, Georgia had to rely on early childhood programs that were already in operation. Here's writing center. Here's water center. I'm happy with the service we get from Scottsdale. Uh, it's, it's a good school. I, I don't know how it would judge against the rest of the state of Georgia, honestly. There's some places. You know, yeah, there are some places that... Um, we just wouldn't send her. In some places we wish we probably we probably wish we could send her, yeah. but can't. But not all the same. No. Oh. oh no. Oh no. Yeah. There are places closer to home that we wouldn't take her. Mm -hmm. Many state preschool classes are in daycare centers. Workers there were making minimum wage when the program began. Now they're the teachers. Georgia has taken steps to improve teacher quality. It's raised the minimum salary to $19,000 a year. You know what this is? That's corn. That's corn. And it's paying to send teachers to college. I mean, you really don't think you learn a lot, but you do, because there's so many different people in there that's been in child care so long. You learn a lot of knowledge. Are there certain things that you teach that you didn't teach before now that you're part of the U pre k program? I no, teach about the same. No, not really. The basics, their shapes, their numbers, um, the months, the days. Which puzzles are What do you do in terms of getting kids ready to read? We cut out cereal boxes with the names on it. That's a reading thing that we use back there. Um, McDonald's signs. 
like, you know, the parents and say, okay, where are we going? And kids can recognize, even though they can't read, they recognize the letters, and that's the first step of reading. Walmart, mm -hmm. that's reading. Uh, attracting uh, the best and the brightest to teach in, in preschool programs is a challenge in any state, whether it's Georgia or, or California or Kentucky. We have a teacher shortage here in Georgia. You know, in all honesty, teaching preschool in, in our society is not uh, a job that um, has a whole lot of social prestige and status and is not uh, a well-paid position. It is a notoriously underpaid profession and as a result we can't keep people and it's a big big problem. We do we have a staffing crisis. If you think there's a staffing crisis for K to 12 education, the crisis for early child our annual turnover rates are about I think 41% a year. I mean, the reality is, it's not simply about providing more spaces for children. But you don't have staff to staff those programs. And if the staff are not high quality, then having all the money for direct services doesn't matter. Georgia's program is free and it's universal, but it's also uneven in quality. Savvy parents know where the best preschools are and how to get their children in. These parents are camping out. There's 20 slots, and there's a lot of people in this area, so I knew I had to be down here early if I wanted to get her into the program. At daylight, the line outside Hawthorne Elementary grows. Anyone not get a number? We slept outside in the freezing cold, and um, I think that was the coldest night of the year. Come on, guys, the bell's going to ring soon. Daphne Johnson got her daughter into one of the 20 slots at Hawthorne Elementary. Hawthorne has a good reputation. All the teachers are college graduates certified to teach in public school. Oh, it turned green. Oh, it did turn green, didn't it, Jalen? What colors did you mix together to get that green? I have to say that in the, the program at the daycare center, the teachers, they, they gave the children attention. They were nice. They were caring. It's just that I just know that one is certified and one is not. Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. All eyes are on Georgia to see whether Universal Preschool will have the long-term educational benefits Zell Miller was hoping for. One, two, three. We really won't know how this works until these kids finish high school. One, two. But we can already tell from all these different studies that have been made that these kids don't miss as many days as other kids do that didn't have the benefit of pre-K, that they are better prepared. One, they can two, see the changes three, in these children when they're in the first, second, and third grades already. Seven, eight, nine. If Georgia proves to be successful, will other states follow? Yes. If there were strong evidence that putting children in preschool improves their school performance, increases the probability that they will graduate from the public schools, decreases the probability of uh, delinquent behavior and so forth, yes, then I think it would be just a matter of time before we would have some uh, the uh, universal preschool. Those who want evidence that preschool can make a difference should look to Chicago. In some of Chicago's poorest neighborhoods, there's strong evidence that when done right, preschool has lasting benefits. What number is this? Now, start counting for one. The Chicago Child Parent Centers are two-year preschool programs run by Chicago's public schools. On Monday, he ate through one apple. But he was still hungry. The program was created in 1967, and today there are 25 centers serving 3,000 children in schools throughout the city. So you're going to take 10 green, count 10 green in your tray. A long-term study of 1,500 children by the National Institutes of Health has found that children who attended the Chicago centers made significant long-term gains. Well, you must have been pleased when this study came out saying... We were ecstatic. Um, we've always known that our program was, was special. We are, we are particularly biased about the program. Um, we've always felt each and every one of us that we were seed starters, that we're planting the seeds of success with both the children as well as the parents. So when the study came out and said, aha, we knew it. Absolutely. What are you going to write, Sarah? 
Not only is there lower rates of school dropout by age 20, but, but kids have more years of completed education. They're more likely to complete high school, and our early sign is they are more likely to go to college. Arthur Reynolds is the author of the study. Kids in the Child Parent Center program, you know, their rate of juvenile arrest is 33% lower than the rate of juvenile arrest for the comparison group. And that is a, a, a very significant finding. It's never been found for a large-scale early childhood program, you know, like Head Start. The Chicago program serves the same population as Head Start, but it costs only $5,000 per child, $2,000 less than Head Start. So now make your towel. Why has the Chicago program had long-term benefits while Head Start and other preschool programs have not? vivid violet. One key, Reynolds says, may be the teachers. All have bachelor's degree, all have uh, cer certificates in early childhood education. The staff are paid as public school teachers, which is unlike Head Start and daycare. And there's some stability. It's not a revolving door. I've been teaching kindergarten for 12 years. These kids that I have, they've been in this program since they were three. Step, step, step. They know their letters? They knew their letters and they knew some of their sounds. And they were, and they to... were ready to spell, too, because if we ask them to spell, they're, they're thinking of that letter and they're like, you know, the sound, as you, like, for instance, if you said hat, they would say, okay, hat, A, 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 T. So they, they're able to go H A T, hat. Today, for our nutritional program, I'm going to do what I refer to as the meal in a bag. Another key to the program's success is parental involvement. But this is green onion here is going to be used to garnish. Each center has a parent's room that offers classes and other resources. I learned how to sew here. Yeah. I learned how to cook here. We want the parents to feel that school is the hub of the community. We want them to be comfortable at school because we are more likely to get them engaged in their child's education. Parents are required to volunteer at the school. All right, Jazz, it's your turn. I help out with the children with whatever projects they're doing, wherever I'm needed. You have to volunteer in the room to find out how, what he's doing and how the teachers are, whether, you, whether they are connecting with the children. You want, if you don't volunteer, you won't know. They're showing them that you're interested in them, them. Oh, they get excited. Mm -hmm. Mommy here, Grandma is here. Mm -hmm. And seeing that helped them. Oh, I did good in school today. My grandson told me today he had a star. He said, wait, I got to get my star. Over the bridge on another hill, the grass was green and sweet. The success of the Chicago Child Parent Centers encourages advocates who want the rest of the country to adopt universal preschool. In the long run, we get a more qualified workforce. In the long run, we get children that can succeed, who become productive citizens and family members. And I think that we've gotten to the point, and I think we've got enough documented research now that tells us that when you start early in a quality way, that it pays off in the long run. The investment would be a large one. There are many reasons that we have not gone to universal preschool. One, of course, is money. Now, you're talking about a serious investment of money. If you did it for four and five-year-olds, you could get to 100 billion right off the bat. Money is an issue, but so is ideology. There is no grassroots job. support for this movement whatsoever. For years they've been pushing this, 20 years, 30 years, and it just doesn't gain any steam. And that's because parents believe that they are overwhelmingly responsible for their children, they, and they want to take care of their children in the early years. They're not asking other people to step in and open up institutions for them. In fact, one nonpartisan poll found that only 25% of parents think that the United States should move toward a universal preschool system, similar to the one in France. I think that Americans are making choices that they, they do not want to spend the kind of money that would be required to set up a, a, a universal preschool program of some kind beginning at some age because we have a fundamental belief that the best thing is for the children to be at home. And the government should not have the responsibility of rearing children that are that young.
We have to get beyond this either or, home or childcare, school or family. We have families making all sorts of choices. We should support their choices. What we know about good government is it helps families uh, meet their own personal responsibility. So it's not a matter of a public responsibility or a personal responsibility. It's us working together. Who do we have here? Diana. As the debates go on, the problem of inequality in early education in America persists. And in the country that was the first to provide public elementary and high school for all its children, the question remains, why are we one of the last to provide public preschool? If we're going to start and say we're creating an equal opportunity society for everyone to have the equal opportunity to, to jobs, equal, equal opportunity to education, then it has to be equal from the beginning. That was cool, wasn't it? For more information on this program, visit PBS online at pbs.org. To order The Promise of Preschool on video cassette, call PBS Home Video at 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Major funding for this program was provided by the Annenberg Foundation. Additional funding was provided by the Pew Charitable Trusts, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, and Carnegie Corporation of New York. This is PBS.